Right. Hello, Grand Inquisitor. Uh, guys, the final episode of the Kenobi Full Fat Podcast is here. And we've got a returning guest. It's Terry. I mean, it's Harry. Whee! Fantastic. <laughs> um, White straight I, I apologise. Yeah, no, we've got a nice diverse cast this week. It's all uh, it's all popping off. Um, it's all you know. I, I apologise. <laughs> I apologise in advance if uh, this is a bit juttery or if I'm out of sync again like last week because we've honestly had a bit of a nightmare trying to get this Zoom call off the ground. We're not sure what it is, whether it's the connection or the, someone's laptop, mine. Um, so we're just going to have to power through. Charlie's got a meeting at half three. Not that he records this when he's working anyway. That, 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 he doesn't do that anyway. Um, don't worry, I won't drop you in it. I won't drop you in it. I won't drop you in it. Um. <laughs> well, look, mate. Look, mate. Look, mate. That's the least of your concerns because uh, Star Wars is dead, Char. Star Wars is dead. It's dead, mate. It's done. <laughs> it's buried. It's over. I feel like uh, I've become uh, uh, the last Jedi haters. I feel like, I feel like I've, I've become mm. the very thing I saw to destroy. I really... I've become such a little yeah. like no, it's rubbish. It's all ruined. First time, <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> oh yeah, because because Harry Harry was already a uh, an anti disnoid shill, wasn't he from twenty seventeen? Oh, he was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but now I've somewhat seen the light, and I know that the Last Jedi is the best of the sequel trilogy. Uh, now that I've seen it, all so yeah. I mean, compared to that, that Abrams <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yeah, from uh, you, want an, you want an Abrams Star Wars film again and again? No, wait, no, I don't want it again and again. I never want it ever again. Um, although, you know never. what? I'd take an Abrams Star Wars film over this. Hmm, would I? Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know about that. that. <laughs> That's a bit strong, that, mate. That's a bit strong. <laughs> He's gone mad, I'm not mate. sure He's what's more game. cringe. Yeah, I mean, at least at least Rise of Skywalker. I can't believe I'm. You're making me praise Rise of Skywalker over and over. <laughs> at least that looks like a film, and you know, it's there's true. there's a there's a cinematic quality to it. There's a there's strong sound design. Um, I can true. tell it's shot on location. Um, the the the, the, the fight between Kylo Ren and Rey, you know, the the watery theme uses the environment uh, yeah. far stronger than. You know, like, did you ever want to see Vader and Obi Wan fight in a nondescript pile of rocks? Because I know I didn't. <laughs> no. Like, we can't oh, differentiate just... it from the background at all. No, there's no contrast, no dynamic use of lighting, and worst of all, you know, I, I could maybe forgive all of that stuff if it just had a decent fucking script. Yep, I agree, but there isn't one. Yeah, absolutely. I don't no, understand. None to be I don't found. understand what. I don't. I just feel like it. It was not this easy, but I just feel like it's Kenobi. I pretty. Much, I feel like it wrote itself, but mm. I feel like somehow we've ended up with the most boring version of that story. Hmm. Well, I think when it did uh, hit beats, where it was. Uh... Sorry, you've both frozen. <laughs> Charlie's froze for me. You haven't oh, right. froze, which is what's weird. Oh. Yeah, Charlie's just got this, like, quizzical look to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just like... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What the fuck? Think... How's it switched to him now? Oh, it's, like, contagious, isn't it? Disney Star Wars has affected him so much, he's just, like, the AI known as Charlie Illy is shut down. Oh, no, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> I love the shit. <laughs> um, should we? Can, oh, you can you you can invite him back, can't you? Shall I filibust while you try and get him back on the line? Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. So, um, Obi Wan Kenobi, I'd say it was a finale that delivered uh, a couple of nice character moments. Uh, I liked when uh, Anakin accepted that it was his fault for turning into Darth Vader and not Obi Wan's, thus releasing him from his guilt. And giving him somewhat of a character arc. Um, but I feel like that moment you could probably put into a two hour movie. And you probably wouldn't lose too much. I feel like the whole show in general has just been padding and faffing around. Um, and, and just filibusting. 
much like I'm doing right now. And uh, <laughs> yeah, like I just, oh, what a what a waste of time it's been. What an what an absolute colossal waste of time. No, I, I completely agree. I think I think this should have been uh, a movie, and I think it really shows when we just keep going back to like this cat and mouse uh, chase with uh, either Leia or Luke, and it's just like. Why are we here? Mm. Like, there's so so much of a lack of tension. It's like we we could yeah. be anywhere right now, but for some reason we, we we're always drawn back to these old characters, and it's like, come on, just like, can't we visit like? A, a, what I find so strange is like, even comparing it to your pitch map uh, from yeah. how many moons ago it is now, it's like it should have been with a, a new community, and we should have stayed with that community so we can build the have the time to build these relationships with new characters and actually care when they're in peril but it's like well I'm, I don't care when Leia's in peril and we've done it three times or four times I, I, I've lost count lost count of how many times and then for some reason we've gone back to it again in the finale why? I don't yeah. care I don't care um, it, I, it's I such get, a waste yeah no I, I, I get it's meant to be like um, a moment for Reva at the end but it's like this just mm-hmm. could have been written so so differently um yeah as opposed to what we got because it, it's just no no tension there I, I guess it's meant to be tension uh, with her arc in terms of how, how she's gone from uh you know being a, a dark jedi or a sith or whatever you call it to to you know kind of being redeemed but there, there's just there's there's I don't care for her character enough for there to be tension with that either. So that 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 whole sequence throughout this entire episode just felt like a complete mm. waste of time, in my opinion. It really did. And also, like, there's there's just no surprises. Like, did you really go when Reaver turned out to not kill the child? Even if it wasn't Luke Skywalker, let's say it was a newly created character, I don't feel like there was any doubt that she wasn't going to redeem herself and do the classic Star Wars redemption, which has been played out so many times now. It's just not exciting anymore. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, comp- I completely agree. I, I mean, I, I did, I liked what they, what they did in the fifth episode with mm-hmm. her being a, a youngling or whatever and being driven by revenge, but I don't think mm-hmm. it was played off too well. I think it would have been a yeah. lot better if that wouldn't have been treated as A, a reveal, because it's like, well come on do you know what i mean like it was so obvious um yeah and then yeah they they should have they should have shown that in like episode one or two to really get us to to sort of uh, sympathize with her or at least like her i haven't liked yeah. her at all um during episodes one to four and then by episode five i'm like finally we've got something to chew on but it's too yeah. little too late at that point it's all very bitty isn't it you yeah. know, much like Little Britain, like Bitty, I want Bitty. <laughs> That's all yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I- I'm starting to think that Charlie is not with us in the chat because he didn't laugh at my hilarious reference. Um, <laughs> so I can't tell if he's if he's lagging behind or is he is he with us in the room? <laughs> okay. Well, y- y- just come in with a um with with a sweet reference when your wav is is back up and running and we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll we'll hold the keys to the fault we, we've got it from here um bag what should we say hello there <laughs> here's some cool things you can say <laughs> deborah chow understood the assignment wow that scene where obi-wan did the reference was so emotional Oh my god, I can't believe Qui-Gon Jinn cashed a check. I mean, made a cameo. I mean, oh turned up. Oh my god, I can't <laughs> believe it. Why, like, logically for the story, why would he yeah. turn up at the end? Why? So so you're telling me that the, your your Padawan, who's been in, in, depressed, in peril, oh no, I'll just yeah. I'll sack him off, sack him off. But you know what, when, he, when he's had his arc, when he's learnt yeah. something, or I say learn. Um, oh yeah, you, I was always there, mate. I was always there. It's like no, you weren't, mate. You just cashed your check in because uh, it was a, a one day thing. Oh, it was very. Cheap. I mean, like it annoys me because, like, I feel like an interesting dynamic there would have been either him confronting Kenobi's guilt about Anakin, or failing that, Anakin having a conversation with the ghost of Qui Gon. Like, this is the master. 
that fought for him to become a Jedi, believed he was the chosen one, thought he'd bring balance, and this has all gone tits up in that time, and this is the first time we've seen him since then. Does he not have an opinion on it? You know what I mean? Like, I I hate the idea that Force ghosts just have to be, like, you know, like, story devices. They just turn up and they're like, hi! (laughs) Like, why can't we find out how he feels about that? He's a character. Yeah, I did. I didn't even consider um, Qui Gon meeting Anakin. I, I actually think, yeah, they've they've completely missed mm. out there to to get mm. some sort of conversation. I, I feel like that that's just what's yeah. been missing from a, a lot of a lot of this is just like some character building conversations. And I, I think yeah. at the worst with this show, and this is the main problem I have with it, it's like. Right, well, if you're not going to give us any character bits, give us some tension, give us some good action spectacle or whatever, but we don't get any of that, any of that. And I feel like no. even the prequel at its worst, it would give us one of those... It would either give us tension, character, good action. Mm. I, I feel like it's been lacking on all of those fronts, and I think that's just the biggest crime of all. Um, yeah. Like I, I don't I don't know how they went into this thinking, oh well, it's gotta be centered around um them trying to protect Leia and all this. It just leaves everything on the back foot. Everything. Yeah. It's constantly like teasing out something more interesting in the next episode and then it never quite reaches anything to, to, to really get your teeth into. It's always like implied character arcs or you know something you know an allusion to something greater and we get told a lot of things but we're rarely shown anything interesting you know like i completely forgot there was that uh tala character the imperial spy she died last week completely forgot she even existed she did nothing um yeah o'shea jackson ice cube jr drops out of the story kumail najani drops out the story and then like as soon as they leave they just they they no longer exist because I can't tell you anything about their characters. It's the same with even like Joel Edgerton is such a talented guy, and I know if Charlie's Wav was working right now, he'd be right there with me praising, praising this motherfucker. motherfucker. Oh, there we go. Hey, he's in. He's in. He's in. Um, um, yeah, yeah, Charlie, Charlie, take, take it away. It away. Like, like, Joel, Joel Edgerton. Edgerton. <laughs> I mean, what a talent this man is. You know, he, him and his brother are just. They're just incredible filmmakers, actors, just they've got it all really. Uh, writers, um, but yeah, no, what a waste of the man! It, it, again, he got he had a little, little, little cameo in the uh, the prequels, mm. but you know, he was a rising star then. Whereas now, it was his chance to give us his, his you know, his shine, nothing again, just just. But when he was on, to be fair, when he was on screen, he always delivered that's because he's the boy, but um, but other than that, he had nothing really to do. He had this silly idea where he's, he's, uh, his girlfriend or whatever, what's her name? Blurb or something? Aunt Beru. Aunt Beru or something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, oh no, you know what? We will, you know what? We're going to fight against this false, sensitive Sith Lord um, with our shitty little guns. Yeah, we're going to do that. And uh, that's going to go, that's going to go great, isn't it? That's going to be a great idea. Um, and yeah, and to be fair, she wasn't wrong, was she? Because uh, she just you know, pinged her out of the way. And then she went and finds fucking Luke. Um, and then she's like, oh, oh, yeah, no, I forgot that last episode when I had the yeah. arc already. Um, I'm going to, you know, go through the same arc again um, and remind myself that I don't kill children. Um, uh, it's just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> just, uh, it is so, so frustrating. frustrating. Oh, it's so frustrating. The only good moment of the um, episode, to give it something, was the bit with when Vader's face was... Uh, mask was half destroyed and he had a good bit of dialogue with Kenobi Kenobi said look I'm sorry sort of thing and he said look mm-hmm. I, I, I killed Kenobi uh, Anakin yeah, and all yeah. this stuff that was the only bit I was like okay there's some writing some character but that character mm. was built from something that happened in Revenge of the Sith not mm-hmm. anything we we've had in the following episodes mm-hmm. leading up to this uh, finale what annoys me is that yeah, what, what annoys me is that the fan base will point to that cool moment <clears throat> of sound design and character where he's flip-flopping between the Vader voice and the Hayden Christensen voice and addressing, you know, his trauma to Kenobi. They'll, they'll take that little nugget of something good and use that as an excuse to say that the whole episode was brilliant. 
Um, in much like how they use, you know, one scene of Hayden Christensen in episode five to suggest that he was not wasted throughout the whole series. Um, and it's just not enough. Like, the whole show needs to deliver. You can't just, like, rely on these, like, little, little bitty moments. Like, oh, Qui-Gon showed up. I felt so many emotions. The nostalgia. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> like, if he doesn't do anything interesting, there's literally no point. And also, like, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about continuity. I think it's a, it's always a slippery slope trying to maintain continuity over a 40-plus uh, year franchise. But it is rather weird now that in A New Hope, Luke's like, Oh, what's this, a lightsaber? Yeah, you know, actually, um, this, this woman actually came to uh, the farm uh, when I was a kid and was really intent on hunting me down and killing me with one of these things. I guess maybe I'm of some importance. Um, but, you know, it never comes up. <laughs> it's, just, it's made it so messy. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's crazy to hear what came out of your mouth a minute ago, which was... Oh, uh, who gives a shit that Qui Gon Jinn's turned up? Because you know, in a world where it's done right, we, this is something we've wanted to see for a while. But it just turn, yeah. it just turns up so that everyone could lose their minds. It's that same thing. It's, yep. that, it's kind of that theme park thing that Scorsese warned us about. It's like he turned up oh, absolutely so that everyone could go woo. But he doesn't say anything. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's just that like he just yep. turned up. He just we, all you have to do is. Get Liam Neeson just wear a wig and wear some robes, and all of a sudden everyone's like yeah. oh, bananas. I don't understand. But you got to give us some actual like story. When Yoda turns up in the Last Jedi, that's actually you actually get some of the best piece of dialogue out of mm. Yoda. You get a great, and it, it yeah. makes sense in terms of the theme of the movie, which is failure. You know, and and it, it, him speaking with Luke, it, it all makes sense. Whereas Qui Gon turns up, and he goes, "Ah, oh, yeah, you, you, yeah, you've done it right, mate. Now it's time we can go on some adventures." You know I mean, there's the it's not yeah. it's just there it's only there to please the audience and it's the same with the last line when he says hello there to luke because it's like it it takes me out it takes me out because yeah. it's like you it's, yeah. it's 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 winking at the audience yes yeah, it's, 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 it's too, too self-aware self you say that before yeah as opposed you guys, to just, you know you know what it's like oh, catchphrases Gone. it's like you know I, i'm sure i'm gonna regale everyone with a really funny thing i did once at school when um, <laughs> do you remember when um, that guy came in? I'm not going to name any names into the computer room, and then I said bananas and tried to pretend <laughs> like we were in the middle of something, right? What? That That's cool. like right. Like if someone was watching us during that moment, and that became my catchphrase, and then during <laughs> crucial moments during the rest of my life, when no one else was around to remember it, I started going, and then he said bananas, yeah. like. There's no basis for me to ever say that ever again. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no. <laughs> it, it's the exact same thing. Like, why would he say hello there all the time? Why would Michael Keaton, supposedly in the new Flash film, he says, who wants to get nuts? Do you want to get nuts? It's like, that's a yeah, thing he yeah. said years yeah. ago. Like, why, yeah. you know, why? Yeah. <laughs> and like, do you ever repeat so things that you say like that as a human in general? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I might say, I might say, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, you don't, like, I've preached some stupid shit I think we should make up again. catchphrases. Yeah. I think we should make up catchphrases and pretend like we've always said them. We should. Isn't that how the cookie crumbles, Harry? That's what you always say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I love the cookie, cookie crumbling, crumbling. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 he's nutty, oh. isn't he? And he's Charlie always says... <laughs> Yeah, and, and Charlie always says, well, that's gone and creamed my corn, don't you? You always say that. <laughs> oh, I'm just, just mental for that, and I? I just can't stop myself. As soon as I see something creamed like, my corn, I can't help but reference it. <laughs> in that crucial moment where you were fighting your nemesis the other week when we weren't around, he was like, do you hope to stop me? And you were like, well, that just creams my corn. And everyone watching in this other reality was like, yeah, he said the line. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? Look, there is one catchphrase all British people say, and that is that this was a load of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, 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 I just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm so disappointed. Spike Lee referencing Br British people. It's not my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Fantastic. That's one, of, that's one of my favorite things Spike Lee's ever done. Yeah, no, so... <laughs> and, I, and I love him as a filmmaker, but that is one of the favorite, my favorite things he's ever done. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, do the um, right things a masterpiece, yeah. but when he said that, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, are there any other um, overarching thoughts on this episode and indeed now the series as a whole package? Is there anything that, you know, that really sticks out to you as, as perhaps even something positive that came out of it or negative? Um, Harry, Harry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna defer to you because you've, you've actually not been on the podcast during Kenobi. What was your mixture of emotions from one to six? Um, episode one to three, I was optimistic, but I felt it was very mediocre. And then by episode four and five, it was I knew, I knew we were in the shit. We were in the shit. Um, <laughs> and I knew, I knew, I, especially, like, especially episode four, especially episode four, because it just really showed me what they're focusing on, and, and as I said earlier, like, just complete lack of tension. Mm. I guess one thing that I was looking forward to most, or not most, but the cherry on the, on the cake of this series was going to be, quote, the the best re what, what did Kathleen Kennedy say the the rematch of the century rematch of the century yes um what on earth are you on about what are you on about what yeah. are you on about like seriously I, I I just there there were some nice character moments in there there were some I, I liked um even action wise there were some bits that I did find cool um mm. for example uh Obi-Wan like throwing uh or, or piling rocks onto Vader I thought that was yeah. quite cool um, I loved when they had um, Hayden and James L. Jones's voice, uh, like crisscrossing, cutting between each other. I loved that. I thought that was great. Like, that, that, <laughs> and I think crisscross, <laughs> crisscross, audience, I everybody, clap why, like... your hands. Oh my god, the emotions! It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just why, like, I'm so disappointed with it, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, as Charlie said earlier, like. The show writes itself, like there, there's some, there's something there, and it's so obvious. Mm. But like, it's just not with the, with the show. Like, for example, when you have Mustafa in Revenge of the Sith, there's like we mm. have different set pieces, different sort of fights within the fight. There was none of that really in this no. one. It's all on the ground. We're not, we're, we're just moving and plodding along. It was very similar to episode uh, three of this series. And I remember people saying, oh, it's because uh, Obi-Wan is, is old and he doesn't know how to fight and stuff. I'm like, that's not the issue, guys. It's the, it's the actual choreography or, or the way it's shot. They, they keep using uh, this shaky mm. cam. I'm like, why? Like, I get, I, I get it for when uh, he, he's crumbling in the rocks. Great idea, great, w great way to use shaky cam when stuff like that's happening. But when I just want to see yeah. the two of them having a nice duel, like for example, in episode five, I think the camera's a bit more static during that um, memory um, when Hayden and uh, Hugh and are fighting. I think the, the camera's a lot more static, and it's not. That was the best duel. Much. It has been the best duel. It's been the best yeah. action as well. And even mm -hmm. then, the reason some of it's the best action is because it's so similar to Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. <sighs> but, I mean, I think your Revenge of the Sith point is so astute. But, like, let's... let's the choreography doesn't hold a candle to Mustafar. The speed, the energy doesn't hold a candle to Mustafar. But even if you were to say, oh, well, it's Vader and it's an older Obi-Wan. Like, they're moving slower, blah, 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 blah. Look at Empire. Look at Return of the Jedi. Vader. The jewels there with Vader are yeah. full of tension. Like, they don't even need to be fighting. What I love about Return of the Jedi is when Vader is stalking Luke under the... Um, under the, the platform, and he's like, well, if you will not turn to the dark side, then perhaps she will. And then he's like, no! Like, it's, it's epic. And the mu the music is used so well. Yeah, like, I, it, the music was such a fucking dive from start to finish. I'm so annoyed they didn't use Jewel, Jewel of the Fates. Fates. Oh, but we'll get, we're going to get into this. we got to get into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've they, they, they done, done, they done, done it again. They've done, done it again. But uh, they... Uh, <laughs> 
I just want to add on to Harry's point about um, I just think about the the, the, the shooting of it. It's laziness, mm. I, 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 in my opinion, because it's it's all coverage. No one wants to stick the camera down because it takes time to sit the camera down on a tripod, to set up the frame, to to get the lights, make sure the lights are all there. It takes time. They've just gone run and gun. They've coveraged everything, and they've gone. Yep, that'll do. Yeah. Yeah. There's no language to it. Like not yeah. even that. Like uh, he was saying about the the part of Mustafa. While I was watching it, I was saying to you, Matt, when I because we rewatched the Mustafa part afterwards just to get a little palate cleanser. Um, it's <laughs> oh. it's um drawing from classic films like uh, like like filmmakers like Kurosawa, which is what heavily influenced um, Star Wars in, in general. In that he's he's using the environment to express the feelings of the characters. Like for example, Mr. Fart, the fucking it's lava that's that's bursting up in the air because these two people are, are so furious with each other. That's mm. that's and, and that's happening whilst they're fighting each other. It just it gives it another, yeah. another, another layer of, of, of he's squeezing every bit of story he can out of everything out of the production design everything to add to this moment. In this it's just like oh what random backdrop can we have them in? You could have plumped them anywhere. It didn't have anything to do with that that moment it didn't feel there was no it, it just didn't it didn't emphasize that duel at all um and i just no. think, i just think that's what we, that this show really lost it lost like fundamental filmmaking i feel like in a lot mm -hmm. of it um and i think i think uh, the other thing that annoyed me about in terms of character is just that like the only bit of um like what what was what was obi-wan's arc now you could probably say his arc was that you know he finally apologizes to uh anakin for what he did, right? Let's just say that, right? He, he, he did his, uh, but that's not set up in this show. That's set up in Revenge of the Sith. They don't set up anything in the first two episodes that set us up to like that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no relationship between him and Vader until, what was it, episode, whatever episode Darth Vader turned up and they had a fight? Do you know what I mean? It's, it, I, I just think, but I feel like it's really covered in, that in the line when he's like, I have failed you, Anakin, I have failed you. Yeah, that's also like, true. It's yeah. not really that different to him saying, I'm sorry. Yeah, mm. and I, 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 there's, there's, there's so many opportunities to, to use the characters in a way that, that explores the story. Like, for example, you know, if you said to me, like, you, I haven't seen the episodes yet, but you told me Ian McDermott and Liam Neeson show up, I would have said, well, this episode is all going to be about the dynamics between master and student because you've got the dynamic between Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. You've got all the guilt that comes out of that. You've got the fact that Palpatine and Obi-Wan are both mirror images of each other in relation to Anakin. All of that good stuff, that none of that is explored. They just pop up. They just yeah. pop up so yeah. that the fans will, will jack off to it later. And, you know, I've got to be honest, like... This is the weakest wank material I've ever seen. And I've gone through all of your mum's nudes. Both of you. <laughs> we haven't well, got anyway. Uh... <laughs> Why not? Are you saying my mum isn't fit? Oh, now, you know what, look, I'm not going to say anything about Charlie's mum because um, for those of you who don't know at home, she she's the most the terrifying woman I've ever met. <laughs> you know, if she does listen to the podcast, I'm dead to me. I'm dead to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's over for me. I'm going to pack a bag and, and try and pop the border. <laughs> you know what? There's more chance of um, your mum finding me and fighting me in, a, in an emotionally satisfying and spectacle-driven way than Vader versus Obi-Wan. <laughs> <laughs> the stakes are way higher. It's sad, but true. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> you have not been wanking to me, have you, little pervert? That's <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <stake. laughs> <laughs> 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 Wow, right, we have now switched to a new Zoom call. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know how you guys feel, but I feel very much how I did um, when Doctor Who dropped two awful seasons of television. Um, you know, ten years ago, when I was a teenager or whatever, I would have stuck it out with all these things, even when they were terrible. But now, there's too much content out there for me to give a shit about these sorts of things. There's too much stuff to watch. So mm. I'm actually going to just stop watching Star Wars. I'm not going to watch Andor. Um, yeah. I don't care. I'm just going to. I'm going to stop watching until these things drop something that's absolutely fire. 
the and I'm gonna wait for the reviews to come out. I'm gonna wait for the chatter online. You know, as long as long as it's not on, people online aren't saying that anyone understood the assignment or that any reference was was incredible or that they you know they felt all the emotions. If there's anything, if there's any discussion to do with like story <laughs> and character, then I think I'll be back in. But until then, um, you know, I we 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 all said before this came out. You know, this is kind of the last straw after everything that's been terrible about Star Wars and. Uh, yeah. It was terrible, and um, you know you got to put your money where your mouth is, as Ray Fines would say in in Bruges. You got to stick to your principles, and this okay. is the moment where I now blow my head off. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Um, um, uh, I mean, Rise of Skywalker was a a big one, and uh, I think this was, and then the Boba Fett was terrible, and then this was like the final mm. blow. I mean, maybe I'll watch the Mandalorian. Um, We'll see about that, but other than that, I feel like I feel like it's just not what it was anymore. It's not got the magic. It, I can smell the corporation behind it. It doesn't have the mm-hmm. the hopefulness and the and the uh, vision that it did before with George Lucas and stuff, um, and even Ryan Johnson and stuff. You know, with Ryan Johnson, you know what I mean? Yeah. When they tr- actually gave you know <clears throat> filmmakers their <clears throat> a chance to express themselves through the Star Wars universe. Um, but yeah, here we are. Bag, how are you feeling? Uh, a little depressed, actually. Uh, <laughs> I feel like my my childhood has officially died t- today. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I'm 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 with you guys. I think uh, now's the time to uh, hang up Star Wars. Um, I probably will check out the Mandalorian, but I'm not going to be itching for it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think, yeah, now we are in a time where they're just dropping everything. There's going to be an Ahsoka series and or I can't, do you know, I don't even know because it's just so much. A- Acolyte, all this sort of stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same as you, Matt. I'm going to be waiting until we hear good things about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, not not just like the fanboy things. Um I, I just yeah I, I'm 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 sick of it to be honest with you I just want I want I want good storytelling good characters again um, if that means getting a whole bunch of new characters then so be it but I don't think that's going to be the way that they're going especially after seeing like book of Bo- uh, book of Boba Fett and all that mm-hmm. they still still want to shoehorn in Luke Skywalker and even with this show they want to shoehorn in uh, Leia when we don't we don't need it it adds nothing. Um, yeah, I'm quite frankly sick of it. Like, I'm just, I'm just surprised. I'm watching like, uh, I'm, I'm on episode two, Miss Marvel. I didn't watch episode three today, but it's a lot better. And I'm like, what, what yeah. the hell? What on earth? What on earth? And I know Marvel isn't perfect. I know it's all under the same umbrella, but like Christ, it just shows you what good storytelling and good characters can actually do for a show it does wonders you should try it sometime Kenobi <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm at the stage with with uh, with Marvel um, depending on the hero you can get kind of a different feel like you might have like an earth based hero or a more cosmic side of it so yeah. I feel like there's enough breadth um, in terms of the storytelling not necessarily the way the stories are presented um, which is becoming increasingly bland um, but but in terms of like the characters that I want to follow, I think I'll pick and choose with the MCU. I want to see Thor: Love and Thunder. I want to see anything that involves the Guardians of the Galaxy and James Gunn. Um, and I've also enjoyed Miss Marvel, even though I'm not itching to watch watch every episode. I've, it's sort of like a thing that I'll catch whenever. Um, but Star Wars is dead to me. I just think it's 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 a shame. It's 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 such a case of oversaturation with all of this stuff because. You know, do you remember, guys, when there was two... I know this is we're going back a long time now, but when there was, like, two Marvel films a year and you'd be excited for both of them and there'd be yeah. some hype drummed up for them. And, you know, even something like... You know, let's take 2015, Age of Ultron and Ant-Man. Not great MCU flicks. Fairly average. They've got some good moments in them, you know, but, but there was more hype for both of those things because that was all there was. Mm-hmm. And you know you you could maybe go see them more than once in the cinema and have a good time, and it wouldn't it wouldn't weigh down on the the, the continuity. Whereas now I'm just like, 
Oh, I've got to get through Moon Knight. I've got to get through Hawkeye. I've got to get through this and that and everything else. And it's exactly what they've turned Star Wars into. I mean, you, you shouldn't know, have like, to get through anything. All the blockbuster fare and spectacle-driven fare. Mm. No, you shouldn't have to get through anything. I'm excited yeah. for um, the Batman 2. I'm excited to watch Top Gun Maverick on a cinema screen again before it goes out of the theatres. <laughs> um... I mean, I think I'm probably I'm probably more excited for Creed three than I am for anything in the MCU. <laughs> yeah, to be honest. Um, and obviously, the boys just keeps delivering, so we got that. Yeah, um, the boys is really good. Uh, yeah, the boys. Is yeah, fantastic. I, Matt, I want you to do this. You said before we go, I want you to do this game you had prepared for us. Uh, oh yes, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so uh, I just want to run through a list of things that. Uh, uh, a, a trash and you you guys let me know if you'd rather sit through all of Kenobi again or this other thing alright um, just 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 yes or no's yes or no's call them out as you feel them right, okay Batman v Superman <laughs> oh my god I would definitely rather watch Batman v Superman that, that like oh Zack Snyder knows god. how to make a film look good I can't believe that's coming out of your, our mouths but I probably yep Oh. I think do you know why the only reason why is it's the Kenobi pain of Kenobi though? it's the pain of Kenobi that's what hurts more yeah. as well because it's like something I love when I'm watching it destroy whereas at least you know the Snyder you know Batman versus Superman I can watch now knowing that we get Matt Reeves Batman mm. afterwards you know <laughs> so it's like um, I would I would rather watch Ben Affleck's viewpoint of the ending of Man of Steel and the epic moment where he runs into the smoke yeah, I'd rather watch that twice over than Kenobi, personally. Yeah. No, no, I'm not. I, th- I hate, I hate to say it, but I think you're right because e- just so. because of the, even just because of the length, like you're, you're gonna mm-hmm. have to sit through. The, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know officially how much it is, but it's like what forty-five minutes an episode, two hundred and seventy mm-hmm. minutes. Yeah, which is a disgusting number to say out loud. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it's a lot of filler, a lot of filler. Whereas uh-huh. at least with Batman vs Superman, there's, you know, I, I don't agree with a lot of Zack Snyder's done, but mm-hmm. I can at least see there's passion and he's mm-hmm. tried to do something. Um, yeah, he's tried to do something. Whether I yeah. think it's good or not is another question. But yeah, no, I think I would rather watch Batman vs Superman. Oh, I can't okay. Thor the Dark World, or should I say Thor 2 Dark Skies, as Chris Pratt <laughs> <Christmas> would say. <laughs> uh, I'd load it up, load it up. I'd rather watch it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, actually can't, I, I, I can't believe I actually can't believe it. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I'd rather watch I Thor the Dark it. World. I can't believe it either. I agree, yeah. I agree. I think I would. Yeah. Um, there, there's some, there's well, some good banter between uh, Loki and Thor throughout that film. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I haven't seen it. It's probably right more character yeah. as well, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. It probably yeah. is. Well, that whole scene where he's like, who put you there? You know you know damn well who put me there yeah. like, you know, on the boat. That's, that's better good. than that's anything good. in this. That's, yeah, that's true. That's um, true. And better use of Natalie Portman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, right, hard mode now. The final season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather watch that. Hands down. Hands down. I'd rather watch Hands Yeah, I think that's Hands an easy down. one. Hands down. It's a tough yeah. one. It's a tough one. Yeah, because, one. like, even though it delivers badly on the, like, on the actual, like, coming together of the show, it still delivers, like, some action that's really well shot. And it also delivers on, mm. like, like, there's actually, like, filmmaking principles involved. It looks good. Like the mountain and the hound fight, uh, it's yeah, pretty, pretty decent. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the the episode when they're preparing to go to battle, when they're all hanging out, fucking great episode. So like, it, do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It had moments where it was way better than anything Kenobi does, regardless of where it turns out. I think I'd rather watch it, honestly. I think I would. Yeah, I think I'd rather see Jamie Lannister's bare ass than any of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What a treat. Bag, what, what, what is it for you? Thrones or that, uh, Kenobi? Uh, yeah, probably Thrones. Probably Thrones. Like, just... Yeah. I, I'm, see, I, I, didn't, I didn't watch... Uh, I, I watched the last season, but I didn't watch, like, seven or six, I think. I think I've seen yeah. up to five, but not six or seven. I, I dropped out. I'm glad I did. But then I, I, watched, I started watching the last season because everyone was watching it again. Yeah, 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 I remember yeah. it being... Tw- 
I remember it being 20 times more tense than this, and I, I know it's because... Yeah, no, I agree. ...it being a prequel, and... Yeah. I know it ended badly, but, I like, the, the war, that was a great episode, from what I remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, um, uh, right, okay, now, super hard mode. Um, <laughs> any of Adam Sandler's Netflix originals? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so God, okay, what? so what's it between? We got the cobbler. The we've got one. the do over. <laughs> the do over. The do over. Ridiculous six. I think we might have to do a do over of the do over. <laughs> I think there's Hubie Halloween. <laughs> the ridiculous as well. six. At least I can laugh at it, you know. At least we can get some laughs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, I think for those of you who don't know. I, I uh, I'm pretty sure we can say this. No, 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 no one employed was watching this. Um, me and Charlie, we used to get pretty stoned, and uh, I would, he would, he would suggest we watch something good on the TV, and he'd be too inebriated for me for him to stop me. I would always put on some sort of Adam Sandler <laughs> Netflix original, and we'd sit there mogging in and out of different states of consciousness, just watching the worst. <laughs> And, uh, we ended up watching some some absolute mate, shit. Mate, mate, wait, mate. Once I did a uh, like a quiz on like how many Adam Sandler movies I'd seen, and it was a frightening amount. A frightening <laughs> amount. Like I think actually, I think I've only like missed like two or three. I think that's how many oh. we watched. Oh, oh dear! My too God! Funny. My too God! Funny. Um, I I think I'd rather um. I'd, I'd rather sit. I'd rather sit, I, I get more entertainment value out of watching a Castillo TikTok than anything on Disney Plus. <laughs> oh, but that's that's just a given, mate. Castillo is yeah. the guy. Oh yeah, it? yeah, 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 yeah. Top tier, top tier. We're loving every moment um, of it, bro. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Big man Ting, yeah. Did you like it when Disney took your favorite <laughs> franchise? And they fucked it. <laughs> they were getting willy. It was, Star Wars was getting willy left, right, and centre. And it was hating it. And you were loving it. Yeah? How's that feel, bro? How's that feel, breath? <laughs> A Castillo <laughs> reference delivered by the whitest man in all of the internet. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Harry yeah, Potter um, himself. I, Harry Potter himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think that's probably a good time to wrap up both this Kenobi discussion and this this mini series of the podcast, if you will. Yeah. Thank you to everyone that has watched. Um, we've actually been really happy with the response to it. Um, yep. The views have been pretty strong for it, and you know I, I've been reading all your comments. I agree with pretty much everything everyone's been saying, apart from you, McAllister. Um, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think we'll probably try and do some more in the future but I think I don't think we're going to do weekly podcasts anymore that's a thing of the past um, I think when something comes out that we really want to talk about for longer than 20 minutes um, we'll, we'll jump on and do a podcast or maybe when there's a, a series coming out that's worth chatting about um, but until then we'll see you very soon uh, Charlie Harry any closing thoughts for Kenobi and uh, your feelings on Star Wars in general <laughs> Expect better. Uh, I'm done. <laughs>